Good morning guys, welcome back to my channel. Now I'm just going to preface this video with, I don't know whether this is going to make up the entire video or maybe just half of it, but um, a big section of this video is going to be for my horsey people. All those of you, or just, you know, those of you that are just curious, but um, when I got the opportunity to do this today, I thought I need to vlog it. This is going to be something that I'm going to want to watch back and yeah, could probably give a lot of people um, some really good tips when it comes to my sport. So, as you guys will know, I am what I'd consider an amateur eventer. I compete in British eventing with my horse Flicker and so yeah, we are very much in the winter break, so it's not our season at the minute. The season starts um, sort of April time. So winter is very much about training and I have managed to bag a training session today with an absolute legend and current legend. She is a five star event rider. Her track record just this year alone is incredible. She won the badminton five star this year and she's also won her second five star of the year at POW. So to win, I mean to win a five star is an incredible achievement. To win two in less than 12 months is unbelievable. She is um, one of the best in the world. I actually checked this morning and she's actually ranked number two best in the sport at, in the entire world and she's from Great Britain so makes you proud to be British. Currently ranked number one woman so yeah I am going for a cross-country lesson with Roz Cantor and I cannot wait so Roz Cantor and Caroline Moore another ledge they're doing um, kind of like a bit of a training tour um, around the area where they are going to certain venues giving training clinics and also in the evenings they are doing kind of like a lecture training demo on their own horses but yeah this morning me and Flicker will be riding for Ros Canter which feels pretty unbelievable when I think this time last year me and Flicker had never done an event she had never done a British event she'd never done an affiliated event and now we're training with the best woman in the world, which absolutely crazy. <sighs> Slightly nervous. Um, <laughs> Flick has had a couple of weeks off jumping, so she'll be very happy to be jumping. It's also a bit brainy and a bit windy. So yeah, I'm expecting she's gonna be potentially on the fresh side. This, the venue that we're going to is a venue that she's been to um, many a time now. Um, since I've had her so she knows the venue luckily so I'm hoping she's going to have level head um, but yeah I just as I said I really wanted to document this for myself and for any of you guys at home that are maybe eventing or yeah you want to see what a lesson is like with the best in the world which I am buzzing about so I've got my vlogging camera I've got my friend Grace coming with me today um, she's kind of acting a bit like my groom today bless her she's she's coming along to help um because she I mean obviously it's unbelievable opportunity to be able to um have a lesson with Ros Cantor even just watching there's so much to learn so she's going to come with me she's going to help me with Flicker always good to have an extra pair of hands. Andy is coming because um, he's driving the horse box and also just helping me film some bits. Um, Grace is going to help me film as well. It's going to be a great day. I'm really excited. I was going to give her a quick wash but with this rain I'm not sure what the point is. I think I'm going to wash her legs and just make her look a little bit more presentable. Um, so yeah I have got about an hour before I want her to be in the box so I'm going to give her a breakfast give her a quick clean up and then yeah we're going to be on our way and oh, honestly guys I'm just I'm buzzing I'm buzzing so yeah let's go and clean her up and get her ready for our lesson with Roz Cantor hello good morning Start. I 
hear those jingle bells, people singing about love. It feels like I'm a kid, like I'm forever young. And that's why I wanna sing about the Christmas on its way. A reason to hang around and celebrate this day. Everyone's smiling and it's snowing. It's the time of year again. Are you ready to go? Are you ready? Looking very smart, looking very shiny. Looking very shiny. Oh, you're a good girl. Looking super shiny. Okay, so here we are. I'm up on board Flickr and we are at the lovely venue Vile View. This is a venue that we come to quite a lot when it's when it comes to winter training. They have a really um, fantastic facility outside whereby you can jump cross country fences, but instead of jumping them on grass, you're on a beautiful sandy surface, as you can see. So really good for the horse's legs. You're not going to risk a slip or a trip. That's a problem with winter training. It's really hard to get them out on grass jumping because we uh, have awful weather in the UK. It's usually a bit rainy and a bit slippy. So I'm really lucky that I have such great facilities near me that we can uh, jump in the box and take her to. So at the beginning of the session, I just like to loosen her up with no pressure. I'm not asking anything, anything from her. I'm just wanting her to move forward off my leg just walk, trot, canter around the arena, just get her familiar with her surroundings. As I said, she has been here before, but it was so, so windy. And for those that don't know, the wind can really kind of spook horses because it distorts their hearing. So even the most safe of horses can behave a little bit differently when it's really windy. And, and bless Flicker, she's so good, but I could feel that she was a little bit tense. I could just feel a bit of stiffness down her back. So I just wanted to move her around the arena, loosen her up and then start to pop in some circles. Just get her bending, bending her body, her ribs, her back, her neck just to loosen her up. It's no different than us getting up in the morning and doing some stretches or some yoga, having a cup of tea, reading the paper, instead of jumping straight out of bed and running a marathon. So yeah, this is just a super important part of horse riding. A good warm up is always crucial. I like to get to my lessons like this at least 10 minutes early, just so I do make sure I have this time to warm her up properly. So before we cracked on with the lesson, Roz Cantor actually came over and was asking us a few questions, just getting to know us 
asking what we had done, what we were looking to improve on and just kind of getting a baseline knowledge of the kind of level that we're at at the moment. Now, I would have left the sound on here, but the wind was so bad you could barely hear what we were saying. So I was just explaining to her the level that we are competing at. I was explaining that Flickr is relatively new to eventing. She hadn't got an eventing record when I got her. She was mainly used for other things. So, yeah, we she's still fairly new to it all, but she's been doing really well. And, yeah, we just want to grow in confidence, do, do things that are a little bit more technical now so that hopefully we can step up a level next year. And, yeah, she just seemed to really get it and knew the kind of things that we wanted to get out of the lesson. So there were four of us in total in the group for this lesson. So at the beginning, Roz Cantor just kind of um, introduced herself a little bit more and started explaining why it was so important that she had got this training system that she had developed for herself and would be teaching us today. Um, and just how important it was really to have the solid foundations and solid warm-ups. Um, but yeah, it was really, um, really insightful. And then after that, we started warming up over some boards. So just trotting over these boards, making sure that the horse is picking their legs up properly. It's just really good to get that good range of motion with their legs. Just a really solid warm up gets their core engaged, their back engaged. They have to really um, hold themselves when they're doing this exercise. Everyone's having a good, good time. I hear the single bells, people singing about love. Okay, if they start to drag you around like this, that's their posture going and their expectation of what of your teacher pupil boundary getting a bit too close together. Okay, so if that happens, just pop a halt transition in as quick as you can, canter to halt, work the bit a little bit, say this is my expectation, thank you very much, off you go. So it's very black and white. Okay. And then it was time to start jumping and there was no messing around. We were thrown straight in the deep end, jumping these super skinny brushes just to test our accuracy. So a skinny jump is essentially a jump that is not as wide as a regular jump. Usually they're just about wide enough to fit the horse and rider through them. So this means you have to be super accurate. It's really easy for the horse to run around these jumps. So you have to make sure you're communicating with each other and you're on the same page. They're essentially a way to test whether you and your horse are on the ball. It's the time of year, winter wonderland, <laughs> my winter wonderland. It's the time of year, my winter wonderland, my winter wonderland. What we've got to train you to do yeah. is to believe that looking up is more important than seeing a stride. Yeah. So I start to change my thought process towards a jumping course. Yeah. And it's less about the jumps down there, yeah. more about my, my points to look at around there. Yeah. And yes, I'd love to. I'd love to look at my jumps. It doesn't bring out good performance. So something that she was really emphasising was the importance of not looking at your fence. Not only looking for your next fence, which you should know to do anyway, but actually not looking at your fences at all and having points of reference from outside of the arena so that you're always looking up, thinking forward and not hyper fixating on trying to find the perfect stride to every single jump and having that trust in your horse that they will sort their legs out and find the stride for you, which is what makes really a great cross country horse. You want them to be quick and clever with their own feet you don't want them always looking to you um, for support and to put them in the right place so another big takeaway that I got from this was to actually start slipping my reins a little bit longer on the approach to fences whereas a lot of people would have you have your reins shorter and this actually just allows Flicker to use a head use a neck so that if she's not in the right place to take off for a jump I'm still giving her the freedom to be quick and clever with her feet and get over the jump. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It just, it's 
it's just something you have to keep going. I've been doing this system for eight years. Yeah. Still not second nature. I still come out here today and I still look at every single fence back. Yeah. Okay, so it's just a bit of brain training as well. Super. Let's come over here and have a little go at this exercise. Okay, jump that back down into your crouch position. Move on. Round. Change of gear on the corner. That's watching this back and hearing that nice feedback makes me such a proud mum of Flicker. so enjoy that little exercise from behind her ears now let's go to the ocean yeah let's go outside we can hang out on the beach without freezing yeah, isn't that amazing? In Christmas times We'll be chilling and having a good, good time Doesn't matter if the snow is falling Or the windows in the rain is falling It will always be Christmas in my heart But this year I wanna hang out with my friends and friends you'd never do yourself is it at home she's loving it enjoying yourself good girl And then finally we moved on to the other part of the arena where we were putting into practice exactly what we've been learning but adding in an extra couple of distractions such as the ditches and the water. coming around this corner flicker must have thought we were against the clock because she just fired out of this corner she was really enjoying herself spicy moments where you decided to want to do what you wanted we survived we survived good girl well done well done oh we survived good girl it's all right it's all right it's only a bag it's all right good girl look that's it good girl can you jump
done, Flicky. You were brilliant at that corner. You've never done that before either. Well done. Because that was very technical. <sighs> I know, pretty lady, hello pretty lady. I feel like you're really getting both sides of the coin today with today's vlog. Um, so I am now on my way to a, I was going to say nail appointment then, uh, my brow appointment. So I am going to get my eyebrows laminated, uh, tinted and also LVL on my lashes. I'm just on my way now, sorry for the inconspicuous um, positioning of the camera but my tripod is being really temperamental, I need to get a new one and I was frightened to death of the camera just falling as I was driving. Um, I'm nearly there now, I'm just on the last couple of streets before I get there. My lesson with Ros Cantor was honestly just so good, there were so many really great takeaways um, for me to practice with. and. I really really liked her and her methods of teaching. She was very much a kind of, there was no frills or feathers, she was very to the point and very, she spoke very as a matter of factly and I liked that and she was also quite perfectionist which again I also like. Um, I feel like I strive for, like, <laughs> for perfection all the time with my riding and I want someone to call it out if it's not right. I don't like instructors that just tell you every five minutes, oh that's great, that's lovely, if I can tell myself, like no it's not, it could be better. Um, some people don't like those kind of instructors and they feel a bit disheartened by them but for me personally I like that because then I feel like when your instructor then says well done that was good, you know it's actually good. So yeah, I really liked that way of teaching. She was similar to my dressage trainer, who again, big perfectionist, and she'll only tell you something is right and good if it really is, and you're always kind of striving for that pat on the back, if that makes sense, but you know when you have got that, that you've earned it and it's right. So yeah, really enjoyed it. As I said, lots of takeaways, um, and I think Flickr really enjoyed it as well. So yeah, now on my way to my appointment, need to get my brows sorted out because oh, when I'm not wearing makeup, they really feel quite bald at the minute and I'm very sick of feeling bald. So, so yeah, hopefully I'll be feeling a little bit more like myself after the appointment. But anyway, I'm literally there in 10 seconds, so I'll pick you up when I have parked the car. I've just arrived and Rachel's gonna kill me because I'm turning up with makeup on, which I'm not supposed to do, but she's used to me by now. She knows I'm filming to be fair, but look, I had good intentions. I've got my micellar water in this. I need to just get my um, brows and lashes off, but I was either five minutes late, makeup free, or on time wearing a little bit of makeup. She, she has to choose, <laughs> she has to choose. <gasps> no, in all seriousness, she does not mind. Um, Anyway, let's go into Rachel and get these bad boy brows sorted out. Thank you, I've just, <laughs> I've just got in with the lovely Rachel. She fully expected it. As soon as she opened the door, she was like, oh God, <laughs> she knew I had my face on. And <laughs> we're equipped. We are, we're fully equipped. She's used to having to do a last minute um, <laughs> removal on me. She knows it's the uh, cons, of, the cons that come with the job, but you look very nice Ooh, today. Thank you, my dear. Prepared <laughs> for the camera. Oh no, I? camera ready. You look very tanned. Where did you just go to? Cyprus. Oh. Solo. Oh, I feel a bit pasty now. Anyway, shall I lie down? Okay. Can do, just... yeah. Ooh, there we go. Right, me. what we're taking off first? Brows or lashes? <laughs> let's, just, let's just go for the lot, Destroy shall we? It all. Destroy it. Oh my gosh, your lashes are that long. I know. Yours do what mine do. Mental you start long, yeah. imprinting on the flipping yeah, eyelid. She's gonna have to have a patchwork. I'm gonna look like a pirate with my eye patches on. <laughs> but yeah, Rachel is literally the person single-handedly responsible for not letting me look like a naked mole rat when I've got no makeup on. <laughs> mole rat. Honestly, oh. I don't know what I used to do before. Like I have seen I know. I've seen old footage of me from when from way back when when I kind of first started YouTube. 
when I was doing makeup, I just had nothing there. I've, I've told them they've had two signs of the coin today from me because I've literally been, I started this vlog at the yard washing mud and oh, poo glamorous. Off, off a horse's legs, <laughs> you know, proper country vibes. And now we're going to the glam side now. Ish. But this is a truly the eye area. This is a truly a you know get you a girl that can do both kind of day. Oh yes. <laughs> from poo <clears throat> to <laughs> from poo to you, Rachel. <laughs> How glam! But yeah, now you can really see, guys. Excuse the um, makeup, but. You can see how kind of bald the lashes are looking. Although I say that, they're nowhere near as bad as they used to be. I felt they've really filled out a little bit over the years. Yeah. Um, Less is more when it comes to lash health. Exactly. Also, guys, I know it looks like my foundation is a terrible match of my skin, but I promise it does match my neck <laughs> when we take it off. But now you can see really good before. But yeah, my lashes are looking long. Gosh, you wait till you see them with the lift. Wait, I was going to say, wait till the lift is on. I know. On. So this is how they look before. And then I'm going to... To be continued. To be continued when they're all nice and done. And, yeah. Shut this eye. Sorry, Oh, there we go. I'll see you in a bit. And I'm joining you. Now my brows are done. I look a bit crazy because of the makeup around my eyes being <laughs> taken Sorry. off. Couldn't see. Oh, Rachel's fault. <laughs> but guys, I'm just going to zoom you in. Look at these lashes. Mm. I can actually feel them tickling the top, almost touching my brows, look. And then my brows, I've had the lamy, the tint. Look how much, look how more full they look. Can we oh, just show them patch. the before on the brow yeah. next to you? Look at this brow. And then look at this brow. Look at that, and look at the lashes, I can't. The lashes it just look so good. Oh, now I'm feeling like me. <laughs> These are great. Oh, thank you so much. You're very welcome, my dear. Do I look crazy, guys, with um, <laughs> my brows? I feel like you can kind of see them a little bit more. I know I look crazy when my makeup's come away, but oh my gosh, so pleased. Oh, and my light's gone out. Right, I'm gonna drive home. I have just got home. Harry Potter on the TV feeling very Christmassy now. Um, yeah, it actually took me ages to get home, but I am just about to sit down. I've got a couple of things to unbox with you. So yeah, I thought we could sit down in front of the tree and do it together. Okay, I'm looking a little less crazy now. I've just been upstairs and cleansed my face. You have to be super careful when, I mean, I'm sure you guys will already know this, but when you've had like a lash lift and a lamy, you don't want to get them wet for the first, I think it's up like 12 hours. So you have to be really careful when you're cleansing your face. So I was going to do it with you on camera, but honestly, I looked like, I don't know what, trying to clean around my eyebrows. Hello, have you come to join in? Oh, watch the control and turn on that, darling. Have you come to have a little sniff? <laughs> she loves an unboxing. Um, so yeah, and then I've exfoliated my face. Hence the glow. What did I use? Um, oh, I used the Paula's Choice exfoliant. So it just lit. Can you see my forehead? Look at that. It just, I, I can't explain. It's a chemical exfoliant. It's strong. But I just feel like I get an instant. It's almost like I've just peeled the top layer of my skin off and then just makes your skin just feel like absolute baby skin. Hello, do you like it? You could do with that. You've got a very, very hairy face. My little mole, <laughs> yes. So yeah, you can see. See the girl, look at that forehead. Ooh, <laughs> Tess, was you, was you having a look? So yeah, I've exfoliated and popped on some Estee Lauder moisturizer. And yeah, that's been my skincare for tonight. Anyway, I thought I would unbox a couple of bits and bobs with you. I've got Desi here to help me. Haven't I? Come here. My little woman. Here she is. Oh, you've got a full belly. You've just eaten your dinner, haven't you? I can feel it in your belly. <laughs> Bolly, it's not the time to bring in lemon drop to play with. I don't know where this has come from. Ah, oh, cheeky woman. I don't know where this has come from. Where's he come from? You go and find me a toy. That was Bolly's. You can't take that one off him. Darling, you go and get one. I don't know what. I don't know what we're going to have joining us on this unboxing. 
Hurry up, I need to open these. Oh, we've got a carrot. Come here then. Thank you. Oh God. Oh God. Are we all having a mad one? Oh, for the unboxing. What do you want? Excuse me? Oh, oh. <laughs> sassy lady. Go get it. Uh. You two are just nutters, aren't you? Anyway. Finished, darling. I promise I will play with you. I just need to. <laughs> this is the problem, guys. When I sit on the floor, they think it's playtime. <sighs> right. I think that's enough now, isn't it? You've got a lemon, you've got a carrot, yeah? We've got all of the fruit and veg. Let me finally get down to the unboxing. I've got a few bits and bobs to open with you. Thought I'd start with this one because this looks very Christmassy. We've got a lovely big gold bow on the front of the bag and I know exactly what this is. So in a couple of days, I am going on like an overnight UK staycation with Katie Loxton. If you're not new to my channel, you'll know all about Katie Loxton. They are a handbag brand. And um, yeah, I've worked with them a few times now. Last year, I was part of their like holiday campaign and did a photo shoot with them. Been to various events with them over the year. And we are, well, I've been invited to their Christmas event. So I'm going on an overnight stay in a gorgeous, like country manor house. It looks very, very nice. Um, but anyway, ahead of the stay, they have sent to me one of their, the, uh, it's actually called their Weekender bag and it's their travel bag. So they let me choose one. Now I do have one of these already in a different color and I find them so useful, but I chose a different color. So let me open this one with you. Oh my gosh, this is such a lovely colour. We have, look at this. The gorgeous weekender bag in this tan colour. How gorgeous is this? The dogs are trying to put their toys in it. I think this is just stunning. Now I've got this in, it's kind of like a cream grey colour. And as I said, I find them so useful. You don't have to use these as just an overnight bag. You could use these as your cabin bag for if you're traveling. Or like me, I actually, I mean, I use mine for everything. I use mine for traveling with, whatever. But recently I've started using my other one as my competition bag. So when me and Flickr go um, competing, if we're traveling to compete, I will put all of my competition wear in there. So my show jacket, my jobpers. Um, and yeah, and it just keeps it nice and clean and away from everything else. But I have had my eye on this colour for so long. I just think it's so classic and lovely looking. I mean, oh, gorgeous tan colour. How nice is this going to be to like carry when I've got like, tan boots and oh, just gorgeous. You can have these personalised as well. I've got my other one personalised. I've got my initials AC on there. Really good, um, I'd say, for a Christmas present. I think it's one of those presents. It's a good present to get someone for when maybe you don't know what to buy them because everyone finds these hold all bags useful. Even if you don't travel or go on holiday very much, like I said, I use mine for competing. You can use it for a gym bag. I get loads of use out of this. They do them in multiple colors as well. I'm um, really tempted by the black one, but I thought black's a bit boring, isn't it? I've got so many black bags. So I thought the tan was just gorgeous, but yeah, super good Christmas prezzy ideas. I thought I'd show you that, but yeah, can't wait to use that in a couple of days when we go on our little trip. And then I have another parcel to open. Oh, it's quite a heavy one. So I was sent this gorgeous little bag. Open this up. Love a bit of Elemis. Oh my God. Oh wow, I bet this smells good. This is their, oh my God, this is one of their ranges that they do. Oh. It's one of their pro collagen ranges, but I've not smelled this one before. So, oh, gorgeous. So it's a six piece set. I'll show you each thing that's in here. So I'm just gonna shimmy on up closer to you. 
So first up, we have the Elemis Green Fig Bath and Shower Milk. I am slightly obsessed with their shower milks. Let me smell this one. Oh, that is lovely. Oh my gosh, that smells incredible. Oh, we also have their Elemis Rehydrating Ginseng Toner. And the, oh, this is the body butter to match. So the green fig velvet body butter. This is such like a Christmas, it's got such a Christmassy edge. I, I know they haven't bought this out specifically for Christmas, but with it being fig, it just gives it that Christmas edge, doesn't it? Let me smell this body butter. Oh my gosh, it's got a seal on it, but I can actually smell it through it. Oh my gosh. That is lovely, and I'm loving the vibes. I'm loving the green vibes on here, it's very cute. And then you also have the Elemis Pro Collagen Advanced Eye Treatment, the Elemis Pro Collagen Marine Cream. Really like these two products. I started using this um, basically towards the end of this year, the eye treatment, and I've been really liking it. I've been using, um, I've used kind of the regular sort of moisturiser, if you would zoom in, there we go. I've used this um, loads of times now, but yeah, for the first time this year, I tried the advanced eye treatment and really like it. And then, oh, <laughs> absolute OG, the Elemis Pro Collagen Cleansing Balm. Yeah, this would be a really nice, again, another really nice Christmas gift for maybe for someone you don't know well, maybe someone you do know well. If they're anything like me and love a pamper, love a bit of luxury, then an Elemis set like this does the trick. You've literally got everything here, which is what I love. You've got your cleanser, you've got your toner, you've got your eye cream, moisturiser, gorgeous um, shower gel, well, shower milk, should I say, and then the body butter. Like That is a whole pamper night in one. But also in this parcel, what a PR parcel, guys. I have this. Oh, oh God, that's heavy. Oh my gosh. Grape and fig. And we have, oh my God, guys. We have like some cheese and crackers in here. Oh my God. Let me show you this. Sorry, I was not doing a very good job of holding that up. But we have some Peter's Yard fig and spelt sourdough crackers oh delish we also have some italian herb oh artisan not cheese oh it's a vegan cheese oh i don't think i've ever tried a vegan cheese like this so i'll be really interested to try that even have this is actually gorgeous look at this gold cheese knife and what's even better is Christmas this year, I am using gold cutlery. So now I have a gold cheese knife to match. Amazing. And then we also have some little, what are these little condiments we've got here? Let's have a look. We've got some, oh, so we've got some onion relish. Also have, this looks like mustard. Oh, whole grain mustard. And then here we have, oh, some pure honey. This is so cute. I'm sorry, but this cheese knife is just... It's the simple things, isn't it, sometimes, guys? It really is. It's the simple things. I feel like that parcel has made me really want to do a wine and cheese night. I just love wine and cheese. Moving on. And then I have actually got a couple of bits from Abercrombie. Shall I try these on? I've already got my makeup done. Maybe, I'll tell you what, I will try these on for you in tomorrow's video when we've got the daylight because it won't do them justice trying them on here. But gorgeous cream off the shoulder jumper. How gorgeous and festive is this? Let me just oh, get up a little bit. So lovely. I've got, I've got this in grey from H&M and I love my grey one. And I've been waiting for the cream one in H&M to come back in stock. And I just can't get it in my size. Um, but yeah, but I saw Abercrombie do it. And I was like, do you know what? It's literally identical. I love it. I love these jumpers because they can actually be dressed up or dressed down. Like You could pair this with maybe a really glittery maxi skirt. This could definitely be part of a Christmas day outfit, I feel. But yeah, as I said, I love the grey one. 
got it in cream but yeah tune into tomorrow's vlog and i'll do a try on of this uh what else did i get from them oh i got this is it a bodysuit or a top i can't remember oh it is a bodysuit yeah this cream bodysuit but it's in this thicker it's not a knit but it yeah it is actually it's like a fine knit but it's actually quite a thick um really like solid material it's i can't explain it i love the sweetheart neckline but yeah i thought this with a wide leg pair of trousers or faux leather trousers i mean with anything to be honest but yeah i thought this would be really nice to wear and then finally i also picked up this jumper i mean this is just for like you know chilling in to be honest it just looked super cozy i'm pretty sure i've got a large in this oh no i've got a medium so it's just this oversized gray sweater just oversized sweater i thought for wearing with leggings my slippers for in the house we all need those cozy throw on um jumpers and yeah i just thought this would be quite a nice one because it's got a bit of a wintry vibe and i love that um that kind of gray marl color but yeah there we go i think this would look also really nice with um a turtleneck maybe a white turtleneck underneath i love that look as i said I'll do a try on for you um, tomorrow. Anyway, guys, I'm going to end this vlog here. It's been quite a long day and I am pretty tired now. So I'm actually going to go and put my pyjamas on and I'm going to carry on watching Harry Potter. I think I might make myself a nice cup of tea. And yeah, I need to plan my outfit as well for tomorrow. So yeah, we've got a nice day out tomorrow, me and Andy have. So yeah, tune in for tomorrow's vlog, guys. But for now... As always, I will see you in the next one. Bye.